again about the joy of trusting and not putting any limits on trusting so that you can just keep trusting more and more and more and and be 100% intuitive and don't have to feel that you have to still figure the world out, weigh the options, the pros and the cons, you know, the old analytical thinking of survival that we were taught you have to do in order to make it in the world. Who says we have to make it in the world? You know, Jesus said, you know, except you become as little children, you cannot enter the kingdom of heaven. Mm -hmm. And he, he clarifies that in the Course by saying, children, infants, are completely dependent on their parents for their survival. Right. And likewise, we should be that dependent on the Holy Spirit in our mind. Mm -hmm. You can't be too God dependent. You can't, there's no way that you can become too God dependent. Even my grandmother, I would get into these mystical states and one time I went to see um, the movie The Truman Show mm -hmm. and I was so enraptured with joy after I saw The Truman Show that I just wanted to stay out there and watch the eyes of all the people that were coming out of the movie theater because I felt so in love with everyone. And then I went over to my grandmother's house and I was like dancing around her apartment like Fred Astaire, <laughs> hopping on the furniture and dancing around. I was so happy. And she said, Dave, are you all right? <laughs> and I said, I'm wonderful. And she said, well, you are really happy. And I said, I know, I know, it's, um, it's just amazing. And she said, well, just don't too fanatic. And, and I said, how can you get too fanatic about happiness? You know, I'm, not, I'm not joining a religion or anything like this. I'm just happy in the moment, you know. It's, okay. But that's really, that's really what we're going into, like you said, exploring together mm -hmm. to see if there's any aspects of the veil that still seem to attract us in any way or that we would think, you know, could be worthy of delaying accepting the atonement, because that's really our, our sole function, is to accept the atonement and live in that, that joy. Mm -hmm. So, we're here. Okay, so, can we speak to purpose? Yeah. <laughs> because, um, I mean, my practice is to follow guidance, and um, I think you got a great call <laughs> just to walk, you know, and, and be invited, follow the invitation, you know. Um, you know, part, part of what I feel like I'm being called to is um, as a teacher and coming out more into the public and then you got to do the whole, it seems, I have to do the whole back office thing and organize it and, you know. So, I realize it's about trust, but I caught one of your um, audios last week and you were talking about organization and how there was no need to organize and well, but someone posted that event on the web, web <laughs> website, you know, someone's doing that. Are they in you? <laughs> like, you know, it's still, obviously, you know, it's quite, not quite there yet, or what, you know. But I'm grappling, you know, with how to, to really live this in, in purpose. And, and still function, you know, still do the, what needs to be done. Right? And I, I, I do, I've been applying um, effortless, you know, effortless action to the best of my ability. So, I love this letting go. And I actually, I actually had an experience where I just let go of the whole idea because I tend to get obsessive about it. And then I felt, I felt spirit come in and say, the work is purposeful, you know, it's, it's needed, and so I felt encouraged again, you know. So it's, I feel like I'm on this teeter-totter of complete let go, and then how, how to work and form in that total open, you know, trust that everything will get done, like letting go of my control around it, you know. Yeah. And it's you brought up that, yeah, yeah, and you brought up heaven on earth. You, you were just like, that's how it started right there. Where you were like, ooh, ooh, heaven and earth, you know, you know, that state of mind where they cease to exist as separate states, yeah. you know, where you're in the state of heaven 
and there still seems to be an earth, or still seems to be a perception. It's really the happy dream, yes. the forgiven dream, the happy dream. And, and what I was talking about at the break fits into that in the sense that you know, the Holy Spirit wouldn't give you an end, a purpose, without giving you the means to fulfill it. Right. Thank you. It's a package deal. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's not like multi-level marketing or something in the I world where happen. you get a goal yeah. and then you got to get a, get an organizational team or you've got to you know, get the means all lined up in order to make it happen. You know, like that movie we watched, uh, 20 Feet from Stardom, you know, the, all the background singers and you know, all the steps to try to, you know, make it big and make it big. Even the one woman uh, who was set to tour around the world with Michael Jackson and then he dies. Mm. And, you know, it's, she's just like, whoa, you know, so mm. close. But what I'm saying is the means are included with the end, that, that when you say yes to the Holy Spirit, the more fully you can just say a yes, an unequivocal yes, not a yes and please <laughs> handle this, 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 this for me. I mean, I've had people throughout my whole life in the parable of David where I would say things like, I'm going on a trip across the United States. Who wants to come with me? You're going to course groups and saying, any takers, who's coming with me? Who's coming with me? Well, we'd love to go with you, but we have obligations, commitments. Uh, we got jobs and da, da 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 The woman who did end up coming with me <coughs> had, had three jobs she was working mm -hmm. and she had a John Bradshaw group uh, meeting at her apartment. So in the spirit, in a period of a month, she ended up quitting all of her jobs and having the, the John Bradshaw meeting moved to somebody else's mm -hmm. apartment and going on a very miraculous trip where she was telling me before we left, you know, we're going to be made. We don't have any money, so we may have to stop and do dishes and all this. And I said, oh, a spirit's going to knock your socks off. You wait and see. And by halfway through the trip, she was calling back, letting go of her apartment, and you know, just really going even more steps than that, because she just could feel the joy, the vibrancy of the kingdom of heaven. You know, really alive and well and extending and just just saying yes and diving in. I think that's what. The apostles felt with Jesus, you know, he could, they were fishermen, they had lives, Peter was married, they had children, it didn't matter. You know, he just looked into his eyes and he said, follow me, and there's something that was swirling on. Oh my God, what's going to happen to my life if I say yes to this invitation? And what a ride, yeah, quite a ride for those three years. What, the means are included in the end, and that's the power of our collaboration. When we join together, everything, absolutely everything is given. That lesson you were talking about, that I mentioned on that Spreaker episode, in Lesson 135, uh, and basically, a healed mind is relieved of the belief that it must plan, is mentioned in that lesson, and it's saying, it's talking about this glorious state of mind that you can stay in all the time, unless you uh, activate the past, organize the present, or plan the future. Mm -hmm. Isn't it great? Mm -hmm. You can experience the Kingdom of Heaven mm -hmm. right now, as long as you don't do one of these three things. <laughs> don't activate the past, organize the present, or plan the future. I love it when Jesus gives that up. Like, oh, wow, I'm going to have to let go of everything. <laughs> I've got a five-year degree in urban planning, and he goes, what? You know, it, everything that you think you have and know and everything is, is going to be worthless as you say yes to the plan of atonement. And it's, you have to be okay with that. Like, okay. And then everything is given. Everything is given. We were talking with our Mel, I met you in, in Brussels, or Belgium, it was three or four years ago. And then everything just boom, boom, boom. It just came and came and came and came. It was given, it was given, it was given, it was given, it was given. There were, you know, there seemed to be, a, oh, what about this, what about that, 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 you know, given, 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 given. It's, that's pretty convincing right. when the Spirit keeps showing you that the means are already there. That you don't need to take part of your energy to figure out the means. Mm -hmm. You see how that goes against our worldly training, because we're trained, you must, you can't mm -hmm. ignore the means. You've got to work on the means and hope for the end. But this is saying, no, just 
say yes and, and trust that the means will be given. So yeah, when, when I, I started my journey, I met David four years ago, um, in June 2009. And I, really, I heard already before, like, don't plan anything for your life. Um, but I, I just came back from living a year in Montreal and, and I was looking for an apartment or start again my practice as a therapist or doing, you know, retreat or seminar, or things like that. I was trying, <laughs> but I kept hearing like, don't take anything, don't take any apartment. And I had people coming to see me as a therapist that it just came. I just did nothing, but I kept having phone calls. And so I took them as they were coming, but I didn't try to make anything happen and I didn't take any apartment and I kept hearing it's going to be life changing, it's going to be life changing and it was like the first moment I was oh my god this is it, like it was like I don't know what it is but that's what I've been looking for my whole life, I'm going to follow that and at the end of the weekend for me my life was over, it was like okay this I'm following it. And, and two months later I was leaving Belgium with no money and a one-way ticket to Canada, and then and then I went down to Cincinnati, and everything has been provided, really everything, all along the way, over and over and over again, and I never had to think about it or to plan it. I was just just sharing my heart and sharing my thought. Here is the inspiration I have, the ideas I have, eventually the fear I have about it or the doubt thought I have about it, and it was just a constant letting go of any ideas that I would like to make happen. Right. Like the, the idea that there was still one who, who could do something in this world and just constantly let go and watch like, oh yeah, I want it to be that, yeah, I want it to be that, no, it's not gonna happen, and I want it to be that. And, and just keeping letting go and giving it over and trusting that there was a plan and that by staying with the spirit, the plan would unfold perfectly and that my happiness doesn't depend on the form, yes. but on being mm -hmm. with the spirit in the moment. Because truly, I feel like that guidance of the spirit is about present joining with the spirit. It's not about a future goal. It's not even about a guidance in form, even though it seems to be that way, because the spirit uses whatever we believe in. But truly, what it is, is just to be a, to, to collapse time. That's what guidance is about. Collapse any idea that we have in the moment to fully be joined with the spirit. And from there, inspired ideas happen or action happen and you just follow that. But all my dreams have been met and I didn't even think about them. That's, it was always after, oh, I dreamed about living that one day and now I'm living it. And it was like that over and over and over again. Or even for this tour, just this tour, it was amazing. Like I, I met, uh, yeah, Craig and I joined um, in Hawaii in May and I don't know why, I just had this feeling since we met, we feel we have a deep connection and I had this feeling like, I think you're going to go on tour with David and I, but we had no plan for a tour, absolutely <laughs> none. Like it was just, we were just in Hawaii and in stillness and just really resting and sinking in the stillness. And yeah, I just shared that and then I forgot it. And I went to Utah and I had this friend that I joined closely with and she had a very deep, a very deep experience and she came to me one day and she said, Armel, whatever I can do to help you, just let me know. I fully feel in my heart, I feel such a strong call. I want to support you fully. I was like, okay. <laughs> and then two or three days later, there were some friends, you two, uh, Christine also, and then Patrice in Los Angeles came and we had a, fl a ticket to Los Angeles, but we had no idea what we were going to do with it. So we were just letting it unfold. And they say, yeah, come, if you stop at Los Angeles, come and give a, a workshop at our place. And then, oh, if you are in Los Angeles, you need to come in the Bay Area <laughs> and we can organize something. But, okay, then I'll, I'll be in touch with you. And then this friend, I say, do you feel like you want to maybe coordinate a tour for us in California? Yeah, I'd love that. Okay, that's it. And so every piece has been given. I, I didn't want to... I was okay to travel, but I absolutely had no desire to coordinate a tour. I felt I cannot even do it. I felt just that all the details and all, all that it takes, I couldn't put my mind into that. I, I just have yeah, too many holes in my memory and I cannot keep, keep up with all those details. So 
Um, Swiss cheese is not a good organizer. No, no. And so it just everything was given, and over and over and over again, all the persons that we met, everyone came to us. We didn't come to anybody. It was all given, all given. And then we go to Mexico, and it's the same thing. And and wherever there is a strong call, or wherever there is a strong invitation, the spirit will pull it out of you. It's like you're not going to be able, able to hold it back. Whenever it's truly given and there's an invitation, you just, you kind of, you know, sucked, sucked, sucked in, the, in the straw of the spirit and you cannot but go, actually. And, and then in July, uh, I, w I had a call with Craig and we were talking and I had no idea how it came into conversation again, but I'm like, Huh, you're gonna be in Los Angeles when David and I are there. Maybe you can we can we can join there again. And then he, he talks about a movie that he has started and he would like to finish it and he feels that David is is, is really the path that David is offering is his calling and that he would love to finish the movie with with David and, and I'm like, You can come on tour with us and then I'm like, wait a minute, did I talk to you about that at some point? And it's like all the pieces were oh my god and that's it. It's not that you know, there's a planification at all. It seems like that from a linear perspective or an outer perspective, but inside there is absolutely no planification and no desire for it. It's just answering the call, but there isn't a desire to go anywhere, to teach, to speak. It's not there. It's just wherever there's a call, it's coming out of us and it's pulled out, really, and it's impossible to hold it back. And that's the experience that makes everything happen but not with a desire to do anything. And it is always given, truly in a miraculous way. It's, um, it's really amazing.